there are probably about three main concerns that most people have when they make the decision to begin homeschooling their kids. So in today's video, I'm gonna address my response to one of those concerns. And that concern is, how can I ensure that I will be successful at homeschooling my kids? First of all, I think that's, you know, it just speaks to your love and care for your kids and for their future, that this is something that you're concerning yourself with. But I also think that we can get ourselves really buried underneath a lot of fears and questions and myths. And it's sort of like, you know, this paralysis where you can't even really begin because you feel like you need to know all the answers or have all the answers. Uh, before you can even start. So today I'm gonna share with you guys nine habits that I think will help to make you a successful homeschooling family. So this is not just, here's what I do and it will work for you. It's, here's the things that I think I have boiled down that are very, very valuable in terms of habits, but also what I see in others who seem to have very successful uh, journeys with homeschooling. It's really very different for everybody. I don't like to pass on cookie cutter things to you guys and say, here's the template, this is how you do it, now go. Uh, but in this case, I think if you can implement even some of these habits, it can help to relieve uh, a little bit of that stress, a little bit of the burden that you're carrying around, worrying about um, having a successful homeschooling experience for your kids. And if you're new here, don't forget to check down below in the description box. I do have some various printables. I have a homeschooling course if you're new. I have veteran homeschool moms that take the course. It's a very comprehensive six week long course covering sort of soup to nuts a to Z homeschooling. So all that information will be down below in the description box. Let's get into the nine habits. All right, number one is gonna be flexibility. You have just got to be flexible when it comes to homeschooling. You've gotta be willing to change things. You've gotta be willing to uh, go with the flow because that's part of the beauty of homeschooling is it does give you a more flexible schedule to work with. It's not so rigid, uh, but that can be very hard when you're used to things being a certain way. Uh, you know, we often hear stories of people who's, you know, maybe their parents were in the military, their father was in the military or their mother, and growing up, they just knew that like you had to make your bed this way, you had to do these things, everything was very orderly. Sometimes when we get very used to something, it's hard to break that. And so the education system and just the way the entire thing is built, it is built on a very rigid schedule. You drop your kid off at this time, you pull up into the line, you don't get out of your car, you open the door and you throw your kid through the front doors and they throw them back a few hours later. It's a very rigid schedule, often in school, you know, you go here, you stand in line. So for both the parent and the child, it can be difficult to adjust to the flexibility that homeschooling provides you. But the more flexible you can be, I think the more successful you can be because now you're really gonna be able to uh, bend and kind of go with the flow, which is so helpful when you're trying to mesh your real everyday life with educating your kids at home. Number two is to not compare. If you can make a habit of not comparing yourself your kids or your homeschool to anyone else. Don't compare your kids to each other. Don't compare yourself to another homeschooling mom. Don't compare what your homeschool day looks like against someone else's. It's just, it's completely futile. It's an absolute waste of your time and energy. It will not help you. It will not help you at all. And it won't help your kids. And I'm again, I don't wanna be harsh in this video, but I do think that sometimes we just get so wrapped up in these things and it's it's just a flat out waste of your time. The truth is, is that you have no idea what their life looks like. You have no idea what their schedule looks like. I say this in many a video, but remember that even if you follow them online, even if they're your neighbor, even if you feel like, well, yeah, I go over to their house sometimes, you're not there all the time. Unless you live there in that house and you are there all the time, you do not know the exact ins and outs of things. And so, it, comparing yourself is just useless. You have got to figure out what works for you, what works for your kids, and do that. Put those blinders on, don't give a rip what anyone else is doing, and I hate, I hate like the cliche, like do you, but do what works for you. Do what works for your family. Do not compare. 
Number three is to celebrate the small wins. Um, this is not, I'm not talking about like participation trophy style where we're celebrating every single thing. This is more of an ethos that you will adopt for yourself and hopefully then sort of pass on to your kids uh, by them watching you and experiencing it is that when we, even if it seems like a small achievement, celebrate it. Even if it's just in your own head, like giving yourself a little happy dance. Don't get caught up in thinking that everything has to be this big over the top um, or that we have to make massive headway before we can feel like there's been some achievement. I've spoken about this before, but we evaluate our kids every year individually. And the only thing I'm ever looking for is growth from the previous year to this year. It doesn't matter if it's a snail's pace as long as it's moving forward. Uh, if you have a child that you are homeschooling that has any type of special needs, and by that I mean like ADD, dyslexia, you know that if you don't celebrate the small wins, you will go a long time between celebrations. And that is not going to be uh, something that pushes you forward, and it's not going to be something that pushes your child forward. They need the celebration of some of those small wins along the way too. They need to know that that little bit of progress is good. It's good enough. It's good enough to just make a small amount of progress. It doesn't have to be orders of magnitude better than it was the last time. It just needs to be a little bit better. Whether it's flashcard memorization uh, or you know math drills or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, celebrate the small wins for yourself and for your kids. Number four, you. I'm talking to you. Uh, whether you're the homeschool mom, the homeschool dad, the homeschool grandma, the homeschool neighbor situations, especially since the pandemic have changed drastically. There's neighborhood co-ops now of homeschoolers. There's companies that are essentially helping to homeschool their employees' kids. I mean, homeschooling has just exploded. But whatever position you're in, you yourself have got to figure out how to, if not already, reignite your own love of learning. I have found that the number one habit that has changed me from a reluctant homeschooler, a homeschooler kicking and screaming, a homeschooling mom that felt like this is what my family needed to do, but I didn't really want to do it. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I just, I didn't. Um, and what really changed things for me was reigniting my own love of learning. I had a difficult experience, particularly in elementary school. I just, it was like torment for me to relive that constantly with my kids doing elementary school work with them. And it took me revisiting curriculum, what we were doing, how we were learning. And it took me finding things that I personally was interested in that I wanted to learn about, whether it was relearning something that I didn't remember from school or maybe was never taught in school, or learning something completely new that wouldn't have been a topic in uh, elementary school, middle or high school. It's just something I wanted to know more about. Igniting my own love of learning has made a massive difference in how I approach learning, how I help my children approach learning, overall the success of our homeschool. Because what you will hear so many people say is that I hated school and I don't want my kids to hate school. That's why they homeschool. That's great, but how are you gonna do that? Do you still hate learning? Do you have this very negative, sort of visceral reaction to it because of your negative experience in public education or private education that you still hate it? Because how do you plan to instill love for it in your kids if you're not modeling it for them? Our children, they do what we do. They do what they see us do, aside from cleaning. We all know that they watch you clean and they don't clean. But other than that, they're gonna mimic your behaviors. They're gonna mimic your habits. And when they see you reading, asking questions and learning about something or looking something up when you have a question, like we model for them what it means to be a lifelong learner, what it means to not view education as a punishment but viewing it as just sort of this uh, precipice that you stand on where you don't know anything and you can go there and know all kinds of things. And so to me, having a love of learning myself and being able to instill that in my kids through my own excitement about things has been one of the number one habits. That for me has been huge. Along with that, number five would be read, 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 
and then maybe like read some more and a little bit more. Both for yourself, obviously, but I'm talking about specifically read alouds. It's amazing. Just five minutes on the computer with Google and looking up the benefits of reading aloud to your kids. This is, it's a no brainer. And by the way, I don't just mean reading aloud to your infants or toddlers sitting on your lap or maybe your elementary school kids who can't read this, you know, memoir or something that you want uh, to utilize in history. Read aloud to your high schoolers. I read aloud to my 15 year old. I read aloud to all of my kids and it's incredibly beneficial. It's really amazing if you incorporate reading. And I think when we're talking about habits that make successful homeschoolers, the reason I include this one is not just because it's wonderful educationally, but because it, this habit will bridge the gap between times when you're doing great and staying on track with school and when life goes off the rails, if you keep even just the consistent habit of reading aloud to your kids in those break times uh, when you're not doing as much, you know, book work or whatnot, um, you would be so surprised how much that is going to just kind of, it's, it's almost like it's the glue that holds everything together. So if you're not already reading aloud to your kids in your homeschool and you're currently homeschooling, add it in, try it, see what you think. I think you'll find that you love it. Um, I It took me a little bit of time, but I love like doing the voices and all of that kind of stuff for my kids. They love that. You don't have to do all that. Just simply reading aloud to them is good enough. It doesn't have to be a theatrical experience. Um, and your voice will grow hoarse and tired if you try to make everything a theatrical experience. But it is fun occasionally. Number six, this is a big one, okay? You know, we all know that who we have in our inner circle matters. What is it from Meet the Fockers? There's a chink in the chain. You don't need a chink in your homeschooling chain. You will learn, and most of the time you're gonna learn the hard way, and that's unfortunate. I wish I could fix that for you, but I can't. We all go through it as homeschoolers, so know that you're at least in good company that we all must walk through the fire of sharing our doubts and woes and worries and concerns about homeschooling with the wrong person. So knowing who is a good person to open up to, to bounce ideas off of, to, to vent to, to complain to, because we're human. And homeschoolers have days where they think, my gracious, what was I thinking? Why did I do this? I could get these kids on the bus, get out of here, go to school. Everyone feels like that at some point, I promise you. The key is, is that if you divulge those feelings to the wrong person, they're not going to encourage you. They're not going to lift you up. They're not going to bring you back to reality. They're gonna get down in that mud pit with you and just help you wallow even further into that sort of pit of despair. And even worse, they may help to convince you that you're right, you shouldn't be homeschooling, you should send your kids to school. Now, obviously there's, there's reasons why homeschooling isn't for everyone, so I'm not here to make a case that it is. But what I am here to make a case is that if you have uh, discussed with your spouse, you feel confident, you are going to give this a go, know that at some point you're gonna question it, at some point you're gonna doubt it, at some point you're gonna wanna give up. I would encourage you to at the very least, the first couple times that happens to push through. If it's more than that, fine, do a little bit more digging, but everyone has those kind of like cold feet moments with homeschooling and you're not going to be the exception to the rule. You're special, I know, we're all special, right? But you ain't that special. So we're all gonna go through it, we all do go through it, uh, but knowing who is a, a good person to share that with, somebody who can hear you and go, uh-huh, I hear you, yes, mm -hmm, I've been there, that's, yes, I'm sorry, you've had such a terrible day, that is awful, my gosh, okay, yeah, but, okay, yeah, oh, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm, yeah, all right, well, I hope tomorrow goes better. That's what you need. You don't need someone that's gonna be like, you should definitely quit. That's not gonna be helpful. So know who to talk to and who not to about these things. If you have a family member that is adamantly against homeschooling, don't go to them with your homeschooling struggles and complaints. Uh, that's a terrible idea. Make good choices in that regard and it will help with the success and longevity of your homeschool. I can promise you that. Number seven is to have regular check-ins with both yourself and your kids, um, you know, maybe with the principal, if you will. You wanna have parent-teacher conferences. These are still very important things to do, even when you're homeschooling. You should be evaluating, okay, 
Where are we at? How much of this curriculum have we gotten through? How much do we want to get through? What do I need to change? Does this seem like this isn't working? Do I need to change something up? Um, and, and just again, looking at, all right, well, where did we start? Because it can feel like, you know, two steps forward, one step back, or just very like micro steps forward. And in order to avoid the defeat that comes with that, I think it's important to constantly be kind of checking in, seeing where you're at with your goals, uh, which would require you to, of course, write goals to begin with, which is very important. All of this stuff, by the way, we cover completely in my homeschooling course. We talk about what kind of goals to set, how to think about that, how to evaluate that, um, so that you can do this throughout the year. You can check in with yourself, check in with your students, see how things are going, see if maybe there's this outside class that you signed up for that has just been not great. So whether it means that you leave it at that time, probably not, but it means you probably won't sign up for it again next year or the next semester. There's just so many things that you need to be like constantly checking in with yourself, with your kids. How are things going? How are we feeling uh, to make the best decisions moving forward? Number eight is to make it a family affair. Don't feel like you have to be wholly responsible for every element of your child's education. First of all, you can sign your child up for outside classes if there's certain subjects that you don't want to teach or there's certain subjects that your kids are really interested in and they want to go deeper. There's so many options for outside learning outside of what you're doing at home. There's lots of opportunity for the other parent to help and teach subjects that maybe they excel at and you don't. Uh, maybe you have a grandparent who really excels at something. Or maybe you want to include sort of old school life stuff, uh, home economics and, uh, you know, sort of old school skills. And you want maybe grandma to teach your kids how to do stuff in the kitchen, how to bake things. Or you want grandpa to teach your kids about changing the oil and, and, and practical life skills. Not that you, of course, can't teach those, but it's okay to outsource and make it a family affair. Include everyone. So many different ways that you can incorporate everyone in your family so that you're not carrying the weight of every piece of this by yourself. Um, but it's also so beneficial for your kids too. We don't go the rest of our life just learning from or being guided by one singular person. Don't forget that your entire family is essentially a resource in this journey of homeschooling. Um, and it may be an option for you to uh, get a little bit of assistance from them. And the last one is the habit of taking care of yourself, taking care of mama. Um, you know, again, with the expressions and the sayings, you can't pour from an empty cup. You got to put your own face mask on before you help others. We know all this. We don't care. We don't internalize it the way that we should. We are like, um, I am absolutely putting the mask on my child before I put it on myself. And I will keep pouring from this cup. I don't care if it's bone dry. We as moms can fall into the trap of, of feeling like we must become martyrs and it's just simply not true. And over the long term, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're going to run out of batteries. You're going to become exhausted. That's only going to contribute to your desire to quit and walk away is if this experience is just making your own life more miserable on a daily basis. That's not how it should be. And I think we need to acknowledge that. We need to do things to take care of ourselves as mothers, as wives, as home educators. Uh, do things to inspire yourself, to encourage yourself, uh, to, to kind of spur you on in this journey. There is nothing wrong with doing things to take care of yourself mentally, physically. In fact, you must. Like I said, you're going to burn out at some point. And moreover, you want your kids, I would hope, that when they leave your home and they look back at their time with you as their guide and educator and you know teacher, at least for me, I don't want my kids to look back and be like, man, my mom made us feel like a burden every day. It always felt like everything we did was just a burden to her. Uh, she just seemed so stressed all the time. And not that I'm telling you to bury your emotions from your kids and not let them see you have a hard day or the ups and downs of life. Absolutely not. It's real life. They've got to see it all. But if you're carrying this way too heavy load all the time, you're going to, your whole self is going to exude that this is all a burden to me. That's not going to change. It's going to be that way every day. And you don't want that for your kids. You want them to be able to look back and be like, yeah, my mom was human. She had bad days like the rest of us. But she seemed to really enjoy 
teaching us. She seemed to really enjoy helping us learn. And I was inspired by her love of learning, by her excitement about a subject. It inspired me to want to learn and know more. You will be able to watch that happen in your kids. So I just can't say enough how important it is to take care of yourself. Don't let yourself fall just completely to the side. Um, There's this kind of silly thing we do right now that is all or nothing. You either take care of yourself to the detriment of everyone else in your life, or you just completely forget about yourself and wither away into the ground like dust. It doesn't have to be like that. It can be in the middle. You can do things to care for yourself and also care for your family, be willing to sacrifice yourself for your family at times, and that's it can all be done together. The two are not mutually exclusive no matter what people want you to believe. They're simply not. And whether you decide to implement one or nine, all nine of these things, I hope that you're able to walk away from this video with a little bit of encouragement. Maybe you can go, yep, I'm doing all those things. (sighs) Good for you. But if not, maybe there is something in there that you can implement to help you feel like things are going smoother and you have more of a successful homeschooling experience.